Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, our administration has taken major steps, as you know, to make city government more efficient and to lower costs. Uh, for instance, the work we're doing to consolidate city-owned office space will save taxpayers nearly half a billion dollars over the next 20 years. We've also consolidated cities' information technology and infrastructure uh, and human resource operations. And uh, these steps aren't only saving taxpayers money and reducing waste, we think they're also improving the quality of city services. And the same is true of our efforts to streamline another crucial area in city operations, our municipal vehicle fleet, the nation's largest and best. New York's a big city. We all know that. I don't think people appreciate just how big it is. The city's 25,000-plus vehicles and 1,600 fleet-supported staff play a vital role in delivering services. They allow us to keep neighborhoods clean and safe, respond to emergencies, care for our parks and beaches, and much more. And our administration has identified steps that we can take to fulfill those responsibilities more efficiently, and we've done just that. 25,000 vehicles is what the city has. It's a lot of cars and trucks, a lot of them specialized and a lot of them general purpose. But we've got to find some ways to reduce that number and to make the maintenance of them more affordable and to make sure that the reliability of those vehicles are better so that they can be used by the people that work for this city to deliver our services. In 2011, we announced plans to consolidate facilities and share services across 10 agencies that account for more than 90 percent of our vehicle fleet. We made a promise back then we'd do this, and I appointed the city's first chief fleet officer, Keith Kerman, operating out of the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, to coordinate those efforts. And last year, we outlined the specific steps that we were going to take to streamline fleet operations. And today, I'm happy to announce that the steps we've taken have already saved our city something like $240 million in fleet costs. The number will swell to over $450 million in savings by the end of fiscal year 2016, and that includes $166 million in avoided capital costs and recurring operational savings of something like $45 million per year. In addition to the $415 million we'll have saved by the end of fiscal 2016, the recurring savings of $45 million every year will continue into the future and will gradually increase. Now, some of those savings come from consolidating repair facilities and sharing services. This facility that we're in right now is a great example. It used to be operated by the Department of Transportation. It had excess capacity that DOT wasn't using but that the NYPD needed. DOT transferred the garage to the NYPD's Fleet Service Division last year. That provided extra garage space NYPD needed to service its response, response vehicles without the need to find or build another garage. In addition, the NYPD is now servicing DOT and DEP vehicles here which frees up space in those departments as well. So the Department of Transportation and the Department of Environmental Protection are part of this. Through space sharing agreements like this across 10 agencies, we've reduced the city's total of dedicated fleet repair sites from 47 to 37 without reducing services. So reduce that means lower labor costs, lower rent costs, lower insurance costs, less management headaches. It all seems to work together. At the same time, we've reduced our non-emergency light-duty fleet by more than 1,200 units since 01, so fewer vehicles. The number of steps that we've taken to make that possible included a public-private partnership, public partnership with the car serve sharing service Zipcar. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the company, Zipcar owns its own fleet of cars, which customers rent on an hourly or daily basis. And thanks to our partnership, city agencies can now use zip cars the same way a private customer would. So instead of us having to own those cars, people can rent the cars by the hour when they need it. It's much more efficient. It gives us a good bookkeeping system so you can track what's the, when the vehicles are used and where they go, all the good things. We're also piloting the use of Zipcar's car sharing technology for about 60, 600, I'm sorry, city-owned vehicles. In this case, city authorized cities and city employees can go online 
locate a city car that's not being used and reserve it just for the time that they need it. And we've reduced our fleet. As, while we're doing that, we've also achieved savings by expanding the nation's largest fleet of, hi of hybrid and electric vehicles to now include over 6,000 units. For fuel-powered vehicles, we work to, to, to transition to more efficient fuels like biodiesel, and these steps have helped us reduce fleet gasoline use by more than 2 million gallons in the last two years. And working with a private partner, DCAS, is now going to roll out a new fuel usage tracking system at all city fueling sites this year, and that will help us drive down the costs even further. We've also partnered with the private sector to streamline other aspects of fleet operations. For example, we're partnering with a private company to, to supply the city's auto parts and manu manage our parts rooms, including here at the NYPD's citywide shop number nine. And that's done a lot to help us reduce unused inventory and save costs. The city has also partnered with two private auction companies to sell decommissioned city vehicles online. For decades, if you remember, the city did its own auctioning in person at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And now we're reaching a much broader audience online. And the average sale price of auction, auction vehicles is up 30, I'm sorry, 27%. So we're getting a lot more and we're farming out some of these services. Uh, in the case of parts management, a lot lower inventory, a lot better controls. In the case of selling cars that we no longer need, we get better prices for them. The partnership has also saved us money, incidentally, in auction management costs. And because we can store auction vehicles at a private facility, we're now renting the city's six-acre space, space at the Navy Yard for short-term parking and movie shoots, creating additional revenues. So all of these things work together. We've done all this innovative work and more without limiting our fleet's ability to deliver crucial services. And today, in addition to celebrating the results of this initiative, I want to applaud the tremendous work our fleet staff does to keep our city running. It is hard work. They do a phenomenal job, and we really owe them a lot of thanks. I also want to thank some of the people who've made this consolidation effort possible. Deputy Mayor Kaz Holloway, Citywide Administration Services Commissioner Edna Wells-Handy, and the City's Chief Fleet Officer, Keith Kerman. I also wanted to thank President Joe Colangelo of the SEIU Local 246, and Jimmy Grillo, who's here representing 246, as well as Joe Giattino, President of Local 621 of SEIU. Uh, we couldn't have done this consolidation without the assistance and cooperation of both unions, and they have been very supportive. So now let me turn the floor over to DCAS Commissioner Edward Edna Wells Handy. Edna. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. I'm Edna Wells Handy, the proud commissioner of the Citywide Administrative Services. This was indeed a full city effort. And I'm proud to represent the agencies and the men and women of the city who came together around this effort under the wonderful leadership of our Deputy Mayor, Cass Holloway, and the skilled management and leadership of our first Chief Fleet Officer, Keith Kermit. Just to give you a sense of what this took, under the watchful work of the Mayor's Office of Operations, we started for the first Fleet Federation. It was a shared leadership effort of NYPD's Bob Martinez and DSNY's uh, Rocky DeRico and DCAS's Mitch Gibson to form the basis of the effort that you see today. That led into NYC Fleet, which is now under the skilled efforts of our Chief Fleet Officer Keith Kermit. But, it would not have gotten to the point that it is today, Mr. Mayor, had it not been for the full effort of DCAS. And for this, I'm extremely proud from all of our lines of services, from our council's office that work with the law department and OLR to ensure that we were consistent with the laws regulating this effort, to our human capital uh, division that worked with the office of OLR to transfer at least 100 people during this effort from the work of our office of uh, citywide procurement, who worked with the mayor's office of contracts to oversee the completion and the acquisition of the services, including the Zipcar 
uh, contract. We have seen an effort that has materialized in the savings that you have indicated, Mr. Mayor, but also in an effort by the city in bringing our services to the people that's better, faster, cheaper, and greener. And for this, we thank you, sir. Edna, thank you. Uh, next, Police Commissioner Ray Kelly, Ray. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I can tell you that we in the NYPD are very happy and, and proud to have this uh, facility. And uh, we're certainly proud of the dedicated uh, mechanics and staff who not only work here, but work uh, throughout our organization. Uh, they work under the leadership of Bob Martinez, who's right back here. Raise your hand, Bob. He does a, uh, a terrific job. And what happens here is it's essential maintenance that uh, keeps us rolling. They do um, roadside repairs. They do towing for the largest police feet, fleet in the country. We have uh, 8,300 uh, vehicles. And the work that's done here in our other shops enable our police officers, uh, school safety agents, our traffic enforcement agents, to do their work safely, uh, effectively, uh, and efficiently. And they have received uh, many awards over the years. Just last year, they received a top national award for the uh, conserving fuel as a result of the use of hybrid vehicles. For the last five years, our fleet has been one of the 100 top fleets in the, in the country and one of the top uh, government green uh, fleets in the country. As the mayor said, this consolidation is going to save uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, but it certainly has benefits for the police department as well. Because of the proximity of this shop to northern Manhattan and to the Bronx, we're able to get our resources, or resources repaired, fixed more quickly, and back out on the street. And so it has an added benefit not only of saving money, but uh, making the community safer because we're back out on patrol. So congratulations to everyone involved here. Thank you. Ray, thank you. John Doherty, Sanitation Commissioner. John. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I mean, this consolidation's really been an interesting change for the management of the equipment fleet in this city. And you heard the mayor talk about it, and uh, uh, Commissioner Handy and Commissioner Kelly, and and how we integrated all these parts and sanitation. When you look at it, we're a heavy-duty fleet management operation, and for the most part, we have about 5,200 vehicles in our fleet. Most of them heavy-duty. We brought in the heavy-duty equipment from the Parks Department and from DEP, and they blended right in with our operation, and the thing is, when we, we talk about the mechanics and the people that work on these equipments, how that molded together, we brought in their mechanics, some of them that were very familiar with the piece of equipment we were going to repair, and they taught our mechanics the little intricacies on some of the different vehicles. And from the parts point of view, many of the parts in these heavy-duty vehicles are interchangeable with the different fleets from DEP, parks, and sanitation. So that was a big savings for the city and a big savings in our operation. It was definitely a culture change in many ways uh, when you go through these changes, they don't always go as easily as you think. So it was a lot of work by the management team and sanitation and, and uh, Keith Kerman and his team uh, and putting it all together and, and coming out with a really successful uh, fleet consolidation plan for the city of New York. Thank you. Let me just point out that the hard thing that everybody that runs big organizations uh, deals with every day is the not invented here and that I want to be in control and my agency versus yours and this funding versus that funding or this union versus that union. And to pull together all of these things really, I think, demonstrates the quality of the people in management and the people that they supervise. New York City is blessed, and nobody seems to understand this, with something like 280,000 people who are some of the best people I have ever seen or ever worked with. And they really are cooperative. And you see here, and the same thing was true when we pulled together everything for 311. Everybody can say we should pull it together it makes a lot of sense. Actually doing it is the real challenge, the real management challenge and the real challenge for unions and for employees to get comfortable, learn new skills, work in different locations, work with different people. And I think both of these are world-class examples of being able to do that. And last speaker is going to be Keith Kerman. He is the chief fleet officer for DCAS. Um, he's really done an amazing job here. Keith? Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Um, We've talked a little bit about the initiative, but I think, and the mayor got to this. What I'd like to talk about is how many different groups are involved in this. 
Um, I spent most of my 20 years in government at the Parks Department. I was not a likely candidate to be the chief fleet officer, much less the first. Um, I was in park operations and enjoyed it um, very, very much. But one thing we found when we were at parks, and I think it's true for all the agencies that are here today, sanitation, police, fire, correction, education, health, parks, DOT, DEP, is that everything depends on the fleet. Fleet operations, while somewhat out of view, are the core operations that keep our city services running. The sanitation vehicles, the fire trucks, the police vehicles are the literal sounds of city services being delivered. New Yorkers have become used to hearing them, maybe sometimes wish they were a little quieter, but the fleet operations of the city are really the backbone of city operations. And it has taken 10 agencies, six vendors, and three unions to bring these efforts in the last very intense two years um, to fruition. I want to thank um, our union partners, Local 621, the supervisors of mechanics, and Locals 246, Joe Colangelo, and the auto mechanics. Um, there was some trepidation as we, as we pursued these initiatives. Um, they kept our feet to the fire. Um, they let us know when they thought we weren't necessarily um, going in the right directions, but they've worked in partnership with us. We've, we've brought this consolidation together. We've closed 10 facilities. We've transferred to, but we've improved services across the board. I want to personally recognize the 100 employees, um, mostly of Local 246, but also 621, also of DC 37, who changed agencies. Um, as part of the consolidation, there were 100 staff who changed agencies, a couple other hundred who changed locations, but, but that's easier. Um, and, and they were critical to this effort um, as we tried to realign our resources. Um, but we certainly understand that that's a big impact on them, on their families, on their careers, and we appreciate that. There are 10 agencies, um, and the Deputy Mayor, um, Kaz Holloway, mentioned to, to me to, to make sure, but we've had 315 interagency meetings in two years to bring this to, to fruition. Um, fleet is very sensitive among city agencies. Everyone likes their cars and trucks. Nobody necessarily likes other agencies in, the, in that business. Um, but we have broken these silos through very intensive um, relationship management, um, through coordination, through cooperation. Um, all the fleet managers behind you are tremendously skilled and committed civil servants. And they've also been willing to work together in a way that has never been the case before. And it's tremendous credit to them um, and not easy stuff. Um, finally, I, I do want to mention um, the six vendors who have brought support services um, and savings, um, the Genuine Parts Company in parts, Zipcar in car sharing, and city vehicles are now being shared just like Zipcars for the first time. It's very interesting stuff. The EJ Ward and Asset Works companies who are um, helping us modernize our fleet management systems. And then Property Room and Copart, as the mayor mentioned, who are bringing um, our vehicle auctioning online. Um, and finally, I want to just say, you know, fleet is not something that, that people normally think about. It's incredibly important at an environmental level, at a cost level, at a daily operational level. And I just want to thank the mayor, Deputy Mayor Kaz Holloway, Commissioner Handy, Commissioner Doherty, Commissioner Kelly, for you know bringing fleet to the forefront for the first time, really, I think, in city government. Um, and, and that's not just at this event, but it's every day in recognizing the importance of fleet operations and what the mechanics and tow truck operators and, and supervisors do and, and giving fleet a seat at the table. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. And let me just uh, summarize for our Spanish-speaking New Yorkers. Hemos hecho un gran esfuerzo para hacer nuestros flota de vehículos más eficiente sin reducir servicios, arrando más de 240 millones de dólares a la ciudad. Vamos a continuar uh, ahorrando casi 50 millones anualmente en el futuro. And with that, we'll be happy.